女士们、先生们、朋友们，很高兴，作为非洲大陆以外的中国政府代表团的成员们，和我一起来参加世界论坛的。The World Economic Forum on Africa. 感谢施尔布先生的热情邀请。I wish to thank Dr. Schwab for his kind invitation and President Jonathan for the thoughtful arrangement. 也感谢乔纳森总统的主导安排。本届峰会是以中国人民共同体的形式举行的。The choice of the summit was for the theme of sustainable development. 本届峰会是以中国人民共同体的形式举行的。The choice of the summit was for the theme of sustainable development. 创造就业机会。Creating jobs. 现实的针对性。Is most relevant. 本届峰会是以中国人民共同体的形式举行的。The choice of the summit was for the theme of sustainable development. 创造就业机会。Creating jobs. 现实的针对性。Is most relevant. 我仅代表。On behalf of the Chinese government, I wish to extend our warmest congratulations on the opening of the summit. The African continent is an important birthplace of the world's civilizations. In the last century, this ancient and fascinating land has seen tremendous changes. The African people have seized the destiny into their own hands, realized the national liberation and the political and the state independence, entering a new century. The African economy has shown great vitality and dynamism. It has kept an average growth rate of over 5% for more than a decade and has stood the test of the international financial crisis. Africa as a whole has maintained social stability. Its economies have entered a fast track of growth and it is a continent on the rise. Three days ago, when I addressed the AU headquarters, I said, Africa is a pole in the world in three dimensions. First of all, Africa has 54 countries who want to speak with one voice. It has already become an important pole on the world's political stage. Second, Africa's economic aggregate has exceeded two trillion US dollars in 2013. Seven out of the ten fastest growing countries in the world were in Africa. It has already become an important pole in global economic growth. Thirdly, Africa has over 1,500 ethnic groups. It is an expression of cultural diversity. Hence, it is a colorful pole in human civilization. In the world political and economic landscape, it is better to have more poles than fewer poles. Africa's rise as a new pole in the world will make the world more democratic, more stable, more robust, more diverse and colorful, and more conducive to global peace, development and progress. Ladies and gentlemen, Inclusive growth has become a universally accepted approach to development, to realize employment, fairness, and a balanced development within a country is inclusive growth. And to realize balanced development among countries and regions is also inclusive growth. Mutually beneficial cooperation between China and Africa. Altogether, we have 2.4 billion people. Our cooperation has contributed to their lot and contributed to the balanced development of the world economy. This in itself is the greatest inclusive growth in the world. Africa is home to the largest number of developing countries, although many African countries have seen their economies take off. They still face tough challenges as weak infrastructure, inadequate employment, and a large impoverished population. China is the world's largest and most populous developing country. 
经济总量，呃，在世界全面，在联合国人文发展指数的排名，排名第一。中国从非洲面对许多相似的问题，双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展，互为双方的发展。Since entering the new century, the strong growth in China has generated many more exports from Africa and gave strong support to Africa's rapid growth. While the immense development potential of Africa has attracted Chinese companies to invest and do business here. This also expanded the space of China's economic development. Africa has the practical need for infrastructural and industrial development, whereas China has surplus capacity in investment, construction, and production in this regard. Our economies are highly complementary, and by conducting mutually beneficial cooperation and drawing upon each other's strength. We will definitely inject greater momentum into our economic and social development, ladies and gentlemen. Neither the Great Pyramid nor the Great Wall was built by one individual. When we results can only be achieved when people work together in unity. Half a century ago, the late Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai visited Africa. During which he put forward five principles for China's relations with Africa and eight principles for China's assistance to Africa. China has honored these principles all along. Last year, President of China Xi Jinping visited Africa and he laid down four principles for China's relations with Africa, namely sincerity, real results, affinity, and good faith. China will follow these principles, seize the new historic opportunities, and work with Africa to advance our cooperation under the framework of 4.6.1. Let me explain. Four principles, i.e. insisting on sincerity, equality, enhancing unity and mutual trust, pursuing inclusive development, and innovating practical cooperation. Six projects, namely industrial cooperation, financial cooperation, cooperation on poverty reduction, environmental protection, people-to-people -people exchanges, and cooperation on peace and security. One major platform, that is the forum of China-Africa cooperation. Through these efforts, we want to meet Africa's new aspirations, build an upgraded version of China-Africa cooperation, and elevate our strategic partnership to new heights. To realize inclusive growth, infrastructure, especially transportation, should go first. This is important foundation for economic takeoff for developing countries. We will continue to make economic infrastructure development as a priority for China-Africa cooperation. On the basis of the action plan that we are working with the AU for African transnational and transregional infrastructure cooperation, we will jointly promote connectivity on the continent. During my discussions with African leaders, I feel that we can mainly focus on the building and working together on three major networks. Number one, a high-speed rail network in Africa. A few days ago, when I was talking to a EU Commission Chairperson Zuma, she mentioned Africa's dream of the century, that is to build a high-speed rail network. Connecting all African capitals. Africa accounts for about 23% of the world's land masses, but only 7% of the total railway mileage, with 13 countries having no rail links at all. China is ready to respond to the African vision and work with Africa in comprehensive cooperation. With regard to engineering, equipment design, planning, and management of high-speed rail, and is ready to set up R&D centers for high-speed rail in Africa to facilitate your century project. As a first step, 
we can start with sub-regions first. Second, the African Expressway Network. Right now, the intensity of highway and expressway in Africa is only just one-fourth and one-tenth of the world's average. This means great potential for development. Several African leaders have expressed a wish of expanding expressway cooperation with China and a building an expressway network in Africa. China supports such aspirations. We would like to strengthen cooperation with Africa and promote the gradual link-up of this network. Third, the creation of an African regional aviation network. Africa has seen its aviation market demands expanding rapidly. However, it lacks airports, airways, especially regional operation capacity. So, there is an acute problem of inconnectivity for commercial interventions. While China has the experience and capacity in the construction and management of airports, the feeder jets developed by China can meet African needs. So China proposes a China-Africa Regional Aviation Corporation Plan by setting up aviation joint ventures Providing civilian feeder jets, training aviation professionals, and a building supporting facilities, we will promote the regional aviation industry in Africa. In addition to all these, we are also ready to enhance our cooperation with Africa in terms of power generation telecommunication and other infrastructures. To do a handy job, one needs handy tools. China, in order to build an infrastructure network in Africa, China is ready to provide financing, technical and human resources support. The Chinese government means what it says. Here, I wish to emphasize that China's cooperation with African countries is sincere and open for the advanced and applicable technologies and managerial expertise developed by China. We are ready to share with African countries without reservation. For all the projects constructed or operated by China, we can all do it through joint ventures or cooperatives with Africa. China is also ready to strengthen collaboration with international organizations from relevant countries and on the principle of African consent, African needs and African participation, explore trilateral or multilateral cooperation in Africa and jointly contribute to Africa's development. The key to Africa's rejuvenation lies in the development of its industries to support proper labor-intensive industries in China to relocate to Africa on a priority basis and support and support Chinese companies to be localized here to increase. Non-agricultural jobs in African countries, especially jobs catered to the young people. A few days ago, I visited projects invested by Chinese companies in Ethiopia. There, local staff account for 90% of all employees. We are happy to see this. This is exactly what the Chinese government would like to see. At the same time, we support Africa raising its food output and to develop efficient agricultural processing industry. China is also ready to share and provide seeding technologies without reservation. We would also like to facilitate Africa and the resource sector's transformation, extending into downstream and to raise the proportion of localized processing of African resources so as to translate Africa's resources into self-generated capacity. If you really treat others' concerns as your own concerns, you should meet their pressing needs. That's how we Chinese treat others. 
Chinese都有很多的原因，但是我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个领域上，我们在这个
half that of the coastal region. So to realize modernization is still a long way ahead for China. They said we have the same destiny with African countries. The Chinese people is ready to work with the African people to pursue common developments with rather strong overall national strength. We are ready to provide generous assistance to our good friends. In 2013, China's economic growth reached 7.7%, and in the first quarter of this year, 7.4%. Both comparing with the past and on a global scale, it is medium to high speed growth rate. So China's economy might have slowed down compared to the past. This is a fact, an objective fact, because China's economy has reached over nine trillion US dollars in total. An increase at around 7.5 percent will generate an increment of about 700 billion US dollars. Roughly, it means every year we will increase the size of a middle developed economy. China still has the capacity and a solid basis for sustained development. The development gap between urban and rural areas and among regions also entails potential. It shows that China's economy promises huge development space and room for maneuver. For many years in the past, China's economy has registered a double-digit growth. Now it is shifting gear. And the important reason for this is that we are paying more attention to the quality and performance of growth so that our growth is more inclusive, more sustainable. We will continue to rely on reform, which is an inexhaustible driving force. China owes its high-speed growth in the past to reform, and we will continue to rely on reform for future high-quality developments. This will fight the great market vitality, the ingenuity and the creation of our hundreds of millions of people. Structural adjustments will benefit both current generation and future generations. We will use reform to promote structuring improve industrial structure, advance people-centered urbanization, and phased development from coastal to inland provinces. And this will generate economic growth in a wider scale. To improve people's livelihood is crucial to expanding consumption and domestic demand. We will deepen the reform of income distribution system, enlarge the middle income group, build a social safety net, and generate the consumption of the 1.3 billion people, promote social progress and development, and this will add greater impetus of the Chinese economy in the long run. The development in China today is based on more employment, focuses on balanced development, stresses equality and fairness, and prioritizes people's livelihood as well as social progress. This is exactly what inclusive growth is about. We have confidence and the capability to meet the target of around 7.5% for the whole year and keep medium to high speed growth like this in the long run. This is good news for African countries as well as for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria and many other developing countries, especially those in Africa, what they have experienced shows a bright prospect of Africa as a whole. Standing here and now, when we cast our eyes over the whole continent, we see not just the majestic Nile River, the magnificent Kilimanjaro Mountain, and the vast Sahara Desert, but also a land full of hope and promise.
We have a saying in China, when united with one in heart and mind, success is secured. We are ready to forge ahead with African countries, treat each other with sincerity and equality, and jointly scale new heights and realize economic takeoff for African development and make even greater contribution to world peace, prosperity and progress. To conclude, I wish the summit a full success. Thank you.